Hello, I'm Aksuba George and I'm so blessed, praise God, bringing this message to you. Now, how did yesterday go? I trust you had a great time. Jesus instructs that you have a great time, praise God. He came to give you life. Don't let anybody cheat you of that life that he brought to you, praise God. Hey, before we go on today, can we request for our daily bread are you ready join me right now say father i demand right now especially in this season for my daily bread it's coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god thank you lord jesus hey Oh, blessed Lord Jesus. I was sharing with you yesterday. Now we're still talking about tithes and offering. I was telling you yesterday that it's so important in this season that to share this truth with you. Now, yesterday, I was looking at Galatians chapter 3 and verse 29. When I was explaining to you, you are Abraham's seed if Christ is in you. If Christ is in you, that means you have the spirit of Christ. And if you have the spirit of Christ, it means you belong to Christ. So if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed. And then Paul says, you are an heir according to the promise. Now, let me explain what that means. So God had made a promise to Abraham and says, in your seed, all the families of the earth. Now take note, he didn't say all the family of Israel. He said all the families of the earth will be blessed in your seed right in your seed then now he tells us that that seed is christ praise god that seed is christ thank you lord jesus so he says if you are christ then you are that seed and then you are an heir according to the promise god made to abraham meaning it is in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, God thinking, I always say this to people. When God was speaking, right, in making promises, when God was speaking in prophecy, he wasn't thinking about a particular generation. He wasn't thinking about a particular person. There are blessings that God thinks about. For example, a blessing or a command that affects the whole world. He knows perfectly how to execute it. You cannot be his counselor in this regard. You can only come into his counsel. You see that now? So, now when he spoke to Abraham and says, in your seed, I'm going to bless all the families of the earth. Someone will be looking at it like, oh, he was talking about Isaac. So, Isaac, okay. Oh, he was talking about Jake, Joseph. Oh, actually, at some point, Joseph blessed everybody on the earth. Now, something to note is this. Every prophecy God gives, the fulfillment, because God is eternal, the fulfillment is usually in phases. But you see, there are prophecies that are specific. For example, the prophecy of Jesus, that was specific. So only one Jesus will be born. You understand that? Only one Jesus will be born. So now Jesus has been born. He's come. He's, he's, he's the, the prophet that spoke about his death. Every one of those things have been fulfilled. Right? But you see, those were not the end prophecies. There's a reason Jesus was coming. He was coming to give us life. So us having life was more important than the coming of Jesus. But the, Jesus had to come so that we will have life. Now, get what I'm trying to say. What I'm saying is, if Jesus had been disobedient to the Father, that wouldn't have been the end of us. Because us having life, or we having life, was more important to God than the means by which he was going to get us life. So if Jesus had disobeyed the Father, the father would have looked for someone else. Now that one that the father would have looked for or, or created 
would have actually been the one that would be the fulfillment of the prophecy. That's what Jesus did. Thank God he did not fail. Praise God. Oh yes, thank God he did not fail. Now, he came so that we can fulfill the promise God made to Abraham. And that promise is God wanted to see all the families of the earth blessed. He wanted to see everybody do and now the blessing he was speaking. Don't let any man deceive. You know, sometimes we 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 have this meant I, I, I used to reason that way you know, a long time ago. We have but they say the more you fellowship with the Lord, the more He brings you to reality. So we 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 sometimes have this mentality of taking this thing out of this world and, and taking but then you come to realize that everything God is talking about, everything that is looks like a mystery, everything that looks like you know drama in scripture is all for one purpose. That you will live and live well. Funny enough, that, you know, that's what you will come to realize eventually. So sometimes when we think about, oh, you don't understand the mystery of eternal life. What's the point of eternal life? Is that we live well. We live healthy, we live strong. You understand what I'm saying? That's the purpose of eternal life. Because you see, now we, oh, eternal life will start disappearing and, 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 and flying. You know, you want to think all those thoughts. Eh, when we disappear, we will land somewhere. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? When we land in that place, what happens next? It's so amazing sometimes when you when you study scriptures. I don't know, I don't know how often you study scriptures and think. The Bible spoke about Philip, Philip the Evangelist, right? He went preaching to the Ethiopian eunuch. And the Ethiopian eunuch, um, when he finished preaching with him, the Bible said the Spirit took caught him and he appeared in another town. So Philip actually disappeared from the Ethiopian eunuch and appeared miles away. So he was transported by the Spirit. Now you would look at Philip and say, man, this guy has reached a level that he has started disappearing. Now, but Philip didn't disappear at will. Philip didn't say, hmm, now I want to disappear. Disappear. And then he disappeared and appeared. Oh, he would have been doing that to every place. But here's the funny aspect. Philip disappeared from the Ethiopian Enoch you know, and landed. But this same Philip, you know, was in Samaria and preached the gospel of Jesus and couldn't get one person filled with the Holy Ghost. Read your Bible. He couldn't get one person filled with the Holy Ghost. So he had to send message to them in Jerusalem. I said, look, there's something great happening here. Now, Philip was a great teacher. He convinced a lot of people. But after all that conviction, they all turned to him. They said, look, we believe what you're saying. We believe what... That was how far he could go. You remember? Even the Ethiopia and Enoch. But now, the disciples had to send Peter and John to go help him out. And when Peter and John came and they began to, they saw the faith of the people, but it was the Holy Ghost was lacking. So they began to lay hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost. Now those are instances that he laid hands on them to receive the Holy Ghost. Now why did they lay hands on them? Because they had believed the gospel but the gospel was not properly communicated to them. You reply, ah, yeah, low breath. Listen, let's not deviate from where. <laughs> they just, you know, and it, that's the truth about God. So you take something and it's tied to a lot of things. But this is just to let you know that what you think a spiritual man is and then you begin to glorify men because of a testimony or an action you realize that this same man may be deficient in something else that's why when god was speaking of the seed of abraham he wasn't speaking of one man you see that now 
And here is the plan of God. In us, the seed of Abraham, all the families of the earth will be taken care of. Now, that's where I was going to. The blessing God was referring to was that we be taken care of. All the families of the earth will be taken care of. Now, why is God so concerned? Because the life will always be life. Life will always be lived by men. Now, there was famine in the whole world in the days of Joseph, right? God gave Joseph wisdom on how to preserve food in Egypt. Now, Joseph preserved food in Egypt. So when the famine came, all the world was coming to Egypt to get food, right? So God planned that they be taken care of long ahead of time. Now, that's the mind of God. Every time you see a, a bad situation, remember this, that God has made provision for respite. God has made provision that, that His people, not everybody will perish. So your attention should be to look for the provision God has made in that season. Maybe suddenly you lost your job and you're like, whoa, I don't know what to do next. Believe me when I say this. Don't cry. Pay attention to what God is about to show you next. Because you see God, he will guide you. The whole, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truths. It is possible you have been depending so much on that position at that job, looking at the financial benefit that it brings. And God looks at you and says, no, you've not had a perfect understanding of me concerning this thing yet. And now, the only way for me to give it to you is for you to experience me in a different light. So he changes the circumstances and puts you in a new environment. Why? So that you will realize that he is the same God in the valley as his God on the mountain. So he puts you in that different situation and he's watching you. The problem is when you now begin to complain and complain and complain and say, God has forsaken me. If he's my God, why would he allow this thing to happen? No, sir. That's get a good attitude to life. So I'm showing you that before you were born, and, and this, is, this, is, this is the heart of God. He has made provision because he told Abraham, I will take care of all the families of the earth. That was a sure promise and he's not going to back out. He's not going to break that promise. No, he won't. Now, this was the same reason that he told, uh, commanded the one he made the promise to and say, hey, look, put aside 10% of everything that you get and make it a practice for all your generations. And Moses came and taught the people the same thing. What was God looking at? He was looking at how to fulfill his word through the seed of Abraham all the families of the earth will be blessed. So God began in Abraham, the one he gave the promise to, to command him to start putting aside a percentage of whatever he gets. Yes. Now then, and God was not looking at his day. God was looking at the future. Like I said, that promise was to the ends of the earth. That promise was to all the families of the earth. So God was looking at the future. Now, Jesus came. And the mission of Jesus was to establish this promise. Yep. And Jesus came and died. His death broke the dividing wall so that the Gentiles can come in. You know, so now the Gentiles have come in. 
the same principle. So I hear some people say, if tithing is important, why did they not practice tithing in the New Testament church? Now let me deal with this, this issue. You don't see tithing. Now first of all, you heard me say this. The New Testament church is on. So people who say, why is tithing not practiced in the New Testament church? They are false. They, they are not telling you the truth because tithing is being practiced in the New Testament church because we are still in the New Testament church. Now, a revelation that Apostle Paul did not have, now that, that quit thinking Apostle Paul was the embodiment of all revelation. You'd be deceiving yourself to think so. There were still things he didn't know. There are still things our generation is yet to understand. Not because there are truths that are hidden or truths. No, it is there. It is our understanding that is growing. Now, when you even study the scriptures, when they began to minister to the Gentiles, now remember, the Jews understood tithing. Now, they, they are taking the gospel to the Gentiles that don't understand the ways of the Lord. But guess what they began to teach them? They began to teach the Gentiles, they began to teach the Gentiles how to keep something aside. In Acts of the Apostle, Prophet Agabus had prophesied that, look, a famine is going to come all over the world. I'll show you that scripture. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Acts chapter 11 and verse 29. I want you to see this. Ah, la la, brother. When we stop, we'll continue tomorrow. I don't want to miss any of this. And because our time is short, Acts chapter 11 and verse 29. I want you to see something here. Um, 27. 11, 27. And in those days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Take note of this. And there stood up one of them named Agabus. Now you remember Agabus. You see him later in Acts chapter 20, I guess. And signified by the Spirit that there should be great dirt throughout all the world. Take note. Just like God revealed to Pharaoh, he revealed to Agabus that a great famine is going to come throughout all the world. Right? Now, he says, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. So this prophecy actually came to pass that there was famine in all the world. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hand of Barnabas and Saul. Now take note of this. So there was a prophecy that is going to be famine all over the world, not all over Israel. It says all over the world. And the disciples, now when he called them disciples, not just talking about the Jews. The disciples were told, because someone teach, taught someone, I mean someone had to teach them. They began to set something aside. Now, what is that thing they were setting aside? You were not told. I'm, I'm beginning to show you how uh, they began to enter this message to the Gentiles, okay? So they, 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 they told them, oh, um, we need to send relief to the saints in Jerusalem. Hey, but the famine was for the whole world. Their mentality, I'm going to show you some scriptures tomorrow. Their mentality is, My time is up. It's good. What I'm about to say, I think I should say it tomorrow. Praise God so I can explain it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Your grace fills our hearts to bring truth to us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.